walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, it's time to look up. The walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, you'll know soon enough. God is in control, everything will go as he's planned. Walls are coming down, they are coming down in the hearts of man. The walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, things are looking good. The walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, as he said they would. God has had a plan. Since it all began, things aren't what they seem. The walls are coming down, and soon everyone will wake from their sleep. Arise, it's time to see the great. The walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, it's time to look up. The walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, you'll know soon enough. God is in control, everything will go as he's planned. Are coming down, they are coming down in the hearts of man. The walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, things are looking good. The walls are coming down, the walls are coming down, as he said they would. God has had a plan. Since it all began, things aren't what they seem. The walls are coming down, and soon everyone will wake from their sleep. The walls are coming down, and soon everyone will wake from their sleep. The walls are coming down, and soon everyone sleep. All right, the walls are coming down. It's time to look up. You'll know soon enough. God is in control. Everything will go as he's planned. The walls are coming down in the hearts of man. As he said they would. Things are looking good. I mean, even if everything around us is going bad, things are still good. Things are still happening in accordance with God's will, day by day, as the end of days unfold. God has had a plan since it all began. Things aren't what they seem. The walls are coming down, and soon everyone will wake from their sleep. The scripture says, Arise, you who sleep, and Christ will shine on you. God is doing a work in the hearts of man. Everyone who belongs to him will come to him. That is a promise in the scripture. Arise, it's time to see the great awakening. The people he sends to you, they will wake and see the truth. The walls are coming down in the hearts of man. Now I told you, God told me in 2017 to write a musical called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. This all playing out is a musical. The Bible is a song. The scripture says they will hear as it were a new song, only they can hear it. The scripture is a song. 
That's why I'm able to sing through it a lot of the time. The Bible is a song. God's singing, God's singing. And when I was a little girl, now I've done this on my channel a couple of times. When I was a little girl, I loved the musical, The Sound of Music. And there was a little tie-in to my family. When my grandmother was a young girl, the Von Trapp family, when they escaped from Austria at the start of World War II, they ended up in the town where my grandmother lived as a little girl. And the church that she went to gave them clothes because they had nothing, the Von Trapp family. They had nothing, suburban Philadelphia. And then growing up, my grandmother looked exactly like Julie Andrews. Even as an old woman, but as a young woman, she looked just like Julie Andrews, even wore her hair the same way. And the funny story in the family about that is that she was at La Scala and Italy, famous opera house. I believe it was an opera house, maybe a playhouse, but La Scala and dressed all up to the nines. And um, she was standing there and people started saying, it's Julie, it's Julie. They thought she was Julie Andrews. And my grandmother, cause she's a character, she starts waving to the people. Hello, hello, you know? So that's a little bit of a tie-in, but I grew up watching that movie. I still know, I haven't seen that movie in years. I still all, I know all those songs by heart. There's a sad sort of clanging from the clock in the hall and the bells in the steeple too. Hand up in the nursery, an absurd little bird is popping out to say yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo, or cuckoo, cuckoo. That's one of the songs. But probably their most famous song from that movie is Do Re Mi. Do Re Mi. It's how we all learned how to sing in that movie. Do Re Mi. Well, there's a message from the Lord in that song. Believe it or not, there is. I will show you right now. Do a deer, a female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun, me, a name I call myself, Fa, a long, long way to run, So, a needle pulling thread, La, a note to follow, So, Tea, a drink with jam and bread, and that will bring us back to dough. There's a message in this song. Do, re, me. D, R, M. Is dream. Dream. Now the Lord says we are under a deep sleep in Isaiah 29. We'll go there right now. The blindness of disobedience. Pause and wonder, blind yourselves and be blind. They are drunk, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with intoxicating drink. For the Lord has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, namely the prophets, and has covered your heads, namely the seers. The Lord has poured out on you a deep sleep. And then he says, arise, for you were once in darkness. When we sleep, when we are not yet born again, we walk in darkness. We think we can see, but we cannot see until we're born again. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Now go here with me for a minute. This is not theologically correct what I'm about to say, but as a concept. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they were kicked out of the garden. They fell asleep. 
they fell asleep, and all mankind has been asleep since the fall of man. That's why when we're born, we are spiritually dead. We are born into a state of spiritual deathness. And if we're not awoken, if we don't wake up as a sleeper, we will die spiritually dead. But when we wake at some point during our life, Christ shines on us and we can see we're awake, spiritually alive. That's what the new birth is about, going from being dead, spiritually dead, to being spiritually awake. It's all because of the curse that was put upon the land. You're like, what curse? The curse that got put on the land when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, they were cursed. If they weren't cursed, there would be no reason in the revelation to say that the curse is broken. Let's go there right now. Revelation 22.3 says, And there shall be no more curse, which means there was a curse, but at the time of the end, there will be no more curse. What is the curse? The curse is being spiritually dead spiritually dead. Now, that wasn't the part that's not theologically correct. Here it is. Think of the story from the movie Sleeping Beauty. She's born into the kingdom. She's blessed. But then the evil one comes and places a curse on her. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened. God's the one who put the curse upon the land, and he's not the evil one, but it's a story, okay? And the curse is that one day she will prick her finger and fall into a deep sleep. Everyone in the kingdom will fall into a deep sleep as well. And that is what happened. She pricked her finger and everyone fell asleep. Now, it was true love's kiss that broke the curse. That was the only way to break the curse. I wrote a song once about the divine kiss. True love's kiss breaks the curse. What is the divine kiss? It's grace. It's God's love. When we are born again by God's love, the curse is broken. All right. So I've likened it a little bit to a fairy tale. Not blasphemy. Just creative. I'm a little bit creative in the way I think about things. God made me this way. So do re mi fa so la ti. Remember, I am not saying I am anyone special other than a witness of these things and my life is full of object lessons. So this song, there's a little bit of an object lesson in it. So a dream, D-R-M. Do is a female. Ray is a son. Me is the name I call myself. Well, I am a son of God. God created man. Male and female, he created them. Male and female. In the image of God, he created them. And I am a son of God, the sons of God. The whole creation wants to find out what's going on with the sons of God, the scripture says. Romans 8, 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? All who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, are the children of God. Sons includes both male and male and female. When we are with the Father, when we are with the Father, we will no longer have these body suits on. We will no longer have sexual organs, as it were, in these bodies. There will be no male or female. This body suit is our prison suit here on this earth, people. It's what keeps us tethered to the ground. But 
the sons of God, aren't really male or female, not when we're with the Father for eternity. It won't be like that. It won't be like that. Galatians 3, 28 to 29 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave, slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. The scripture says it plain. There is no such thing as male or female in terms of eternity. God is a spirit. And we are spirits stuck in a bodysuit, all right? Just something to think about. Which is why Jesus came down out of heaven and died to set us captives free. We are the captives in chains. Part of the chains is this flesh suit that's trying to get us to be sinful all the time. I mean... Think about it. All right, let's get back to Do Re Mi. So we've got to wake up from this dream that we're in. Do Re Mi. Fa, there's a father. So, there's a son. La is a note, a song note, a song. And T, who's T? T is me. T is me, I'm Tara. Time, T-I-M-E. It's time that people wake up from the dream, the deep sleep, the father's son, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit. All right. Like I said, my life is an object lesson. So after the sun comes a song, and then it is time. After the sun comes a song, and then it is time. I told you, God said, Tara, write a musical called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. He told me many, many years ago to stop listening to music. He wanted me to have a clean ear. So that's why the songs I write don't sound like Christian music. They don't sound like anybody else. They're my sound because I hear from the Father. Really, my songs are like a heavenly song when you put them all together. They are. Let's hear about the song. The lamb and the 144,000. Then I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the voice of many waters and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. They sang as it were a new song. So when the Lord was giving me riddles, there were some riddles. And one of the ones he showed me is the witness. God said, you are a witness of these things, Tara. A witness of these things, double T. There's a riddle in that. Two T's. So we're going to use the T two times. T, W, is S E N T T W is sent. God has said it to me and I know it to be true. I've been sent. All right. So the Father, the Son, and then there will be a song. There will be a song. And then it's time for everyone to wake up. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in me. I am born again. I am indwelled by the Spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit lives in me. 
and the Holy Spirit tells me what to say. And I've been telling you that it is the time of the end. It is the time of the end. T is me, and I'm telling you, God sent me to tell you that it is the time of the end. And I've been singing a song, telling you how to get right with God, telling you all about the Lord Jesus Christ, telling you all about his love and his mercy and his grace and what it is to live the Christian life and how to wait on him and how to trust him and how to surrender to him. I've written songs about the Holy Spirit, wisdom, all of it. The scripture and the revelation. I've written songs about the throne of God and the river of life, all of it. All of it. Because it is the time of the end. But he did also put on my heart that there will be a great awakening at the time of the end. And that's what today's song was about. The great awakening. All right, God bless you.